Hello guys, today I'm gonna create a USB bootable pen drive or thump drive with Linux because I would like to have a portable Linux and carry around with me in my, in my pocket. This idea is very tempting, I love it very much and since uh, I like portability I wanna have such pen drive the idea to have a very small device which I can carry around with me and have my entire computer is uh, is very attractive to me. Okay, so um, I will try to make a comprehensive analyze on the type of the USB you can use, options and all this kind of stuff. So it's going to be a little bit longer. The, the, the tutorial is going to be a little bit longer, but I hope I will cover as much as possible. So, uh, first thing which I did is I was looking for how to create a bootable USB stick with Linux. I came across a very interesting article which tells me how to do it on a Linux machine. With the help of DD, disk destroyer, <laughs> this of course is a, is a joke, with this utility F disk or CF disk and other utilities. First, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. Actually, I'm not going to show you how to do it this way, but I'm going to show you that, uh, where you can read how to do it because right now I'm working on uh, Windows 7. By the way, all these things are I'm going to do on Windows 7, uh, 7 and just to help myself later when I watch this tutorial, I run all the uh, utilities which and monitors which shows me the status of my system what a C, what CPU I'm using how much is the temperature of my CPU of my motherboard uh, the fan RPMs the voltage and so on and so forth and also <coughs> what is the temperature of my hard drives so these utilities are not related to the tutorial but I just want to show mostly for myself what I'm using to monitor my system on Windows 7. So for the hard drive I'm using HD Tune Pro 3.5 on this computer. Here we go. HD Tune Pro 3.5. Just to recall later how can I monitor my computer because sometimes I cannot recall. On Linux I just want to mention that um, instead of HDToon Pro which is not available on Linux of course I'm using smart CTL minus minus all and after that slash for slash def slash SDA if I want to see um, everything for my hard drive comprehensive information about my uh, hard drive. Okay, so this is how my hard drive looks. I have here two Seagate Barracuda 1TB hard drives. They're SATA 3. The first one I bought uh, maybe two years ago and this one I bought just recently, maybe one month ago. The second the last one <laughs> which I bought just two months ago uh, doesn't even have partitions on it I just attach to my system and it stays there not touched yet because I wanna make experiments with it <coughs> so uh, for the CPU and all the information about the CPU I'm using CPU IDE so let me find that CPU ID and finally a software which comes with my uh, motherboard which is Asus PC Probe 2 Asus see how many softwares uh, they uh, deliver sweet cool and quiet with which I can um, turn on and on um, actually the the noise of my fan 
EPU and PC prop. This is which I'm using Turbo V Turbo 5 Evo, which uh, helps me actually to overclock my machine. And of course, there are AMD tools, which coming, uh, which are coming with. Uh, I I cannot recall where did I download that. Overdrive, which helps me also to overclock my machine. Okay, so that's it for now. Those are the tools I'm uh, using to monitor my system. Let's start with the USB and the USB analyzers. Okay, so first I try to install Linux following a tutorial. I'm just going to show you where the tutorial is in a second. So here we go, this is the tutorial. I will probably put the link to this tutorial under the video in the descriptions. So this tutorial describes how to create a bootable USB drive with Ubuntu Live. I followed this tutorial on my Linux machine. I just changed the utility I used, the tool I used. Instead of CFDisk, I used uh, FDisk. CFDisk uh, CF is graphical, is more graphical or has a better interface if you want to uh, look at this way. FDisk is uh, again common line, of course both of them are common line, but FDisk is more like um, Spartan for Spartans. Uh, it's a text interface, but it gives me more options. I didn't use CFDisk because it didn't give me a chance to change my uh, starting block or at least uh, it was not easy to me for to me to find it so that's why I switched to something which is more familiar to me F disk so if you follow this tutorial you can create a bootable a bootable USB drive with a Ubuntu live CD and on top of that you can have a persistence which means that if you make some changes on your uh, Ubuntu they stay. They uh, just don't vanish as they do on the live CD without persistence. I have chosen to use uh, Ubuntu Live on the USB drive with persistence because I didn't want to install it. There are too many uh, transfers if you install first of all if you install it on the USB drive directly because that also is possible uh, the size of the installation is very big. All the files are there, of course. You have uh, better security, but uh, but at, at the same time, there are many transactions through the hard drive. You you make a lot of reads and writes uh, to the hard drive, to not not to the hard drive, but to the USB drive, and. Um, I'm afraid that my USB drive maybe is not gonna last so long. Choosing the live CD installation on the USB drive with one uh, with only one file, which is up to four gigabytes for persistence, because the file system is FAT32, FAT32. FAT32. Uh, I was thinking is is gonna take less space on the USB tri the drive, which is true, it takes less space and also uh, the transactions I think, are, I think are less and as we know the USB drive um, has a limited amount of reads and writes because of the nature of this storage device Okay, so this was the reason I I have chosen to use the Life uh, instead of directly installing Life uh, CD instead of installing directly on the USB drive. On top of that, the USB drive which I used with this method was a USB 2 drive and the performance was very very bad so I tried to use it it, uh, it was almost useless because 
the drive itself was very slow USB 2 drive was very slow and uh, after that I came to the conclusion that first I have to measure uh, the the speed of the device before I try to do uh, whatever whatever with this USB drive especially turning this uh, USB drive into my uh, portable operating system so this is the <coughs> this is the tutorial I have followed and as I said I just changed some some steps here this is uh, something which I probably will make a um, tutorial or just uh, just find a better way to do it okay so those are the steps deleting an existing partition creating a new primary partition this is done with fdisk of course creating a new primary partition again with uh, fdisk 730 of course should be changed because the new live CD is bigger, it's not 730 megabytes, so first you have to create a partition which is uh, which could occupy the entire USB drive but you have to subtract the amount of megabytes which the live CD has because you are gonna, you're gonna create another partition especially for the live CD, create a new primary partition covering the 730 megabytes make the first partition bootable this is a FAT32 uh, partition Windows FAT write the new partition table quit the program this is about the FDisk and after that there are other steps which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial this is what I just wanted to, to tell you and why I'm telling you that just because if you're doing this on USB 2 device um, you have to be sure that you have uh, enough performance in this USB drive uh, very slow performance on USB drive made it almost uh, impossible to work with okay so now I want to cover the speeds of the different devices the next thing I did after this uh, I would call it almost failure it wasn't a failure I successfully created the USB drive but it was so slow that it was almost unusable by the way I used a Maxell drive for gigabytes I uh, probably I will attach to this system to show you uh, the performance which I measure with uh, AG Tune Pro so after that I decided okay I have to make a research I have to find a faster device I have to find a better solution so the better solutions are using a USB 3 device or at least USB 2 but faster device or external SATA device uh, the drives, of course, are faster than the USB drives. For example, if you use a traditional spinning hard drive with USB 3, it's faster. This is the result of my experiments. Uh, solid state device hard drives, which has almost the same nature like the USB flash drives, are uh, very fast as well but I, I didn't have a chance to test that and the USB devices are slower so I'm gonna show you my experiments I did with uh, some external hard drives which are USB 2 uh, and unfortunately I have only one USB 3 flash drive but still I just want to show you the result of HD Tune Pro. So theoretically, USB 3 uh, has a maximum speed of 5 gigabits per second. Serial ATA SATA device, external SATA, should have 6 gigabits per second. USB 2 is 400. 80 megabits per second but these theoretical speeds uh, as you can see here as you will see very soon cannot be reached in the real life 
So uh, let me show you the results of my experiment. Okay, so very briefly I want to show you the results of my research about the devices. This is uh, a copy from um, Stack Overflow, as far as I remember. So those are the theoretical speeds of the different devices. USB 1.1, 12 megabits per second. Firewire, 400 megabits per second. USB 2, 480 megabits per second. Firewire, 800, 800 megabits per second. USB 3, 5 gigabits per second. And eSATA, up to 6 gigabits right now, as it depends on the internal SATA chip. So those are the theoretical speeds and I decided to test some of my devices uh, in my disposal and see how fast they are, how fast they perform. I use the benchmark HD Tune Pro 3.5 hard disk utility on different computers on top of that just to see if there is a difference. Of course there is a difference in the speed. I just wanted to find something which is very cheap, um, small to carry in my pocket and usable. And I think I found it. This was a very cheap uh, USB 3 flash device and I'm gonna go ahead of myself and tell you that I bought a transcendent as far as I see that USB 3 32 gigabytes flash drive pen drive very small thumb drive which doesn't look uh, something special for 30 Bulgarian lefts which it's a very very decent price 30 Bulgarian left is actually let's see how much in US dollars I sometimes I wonder how these dealers can find such a such a good prices. They look to me like uh, traders from Star Trek or uh, something like that, or another movie, for example, Star Wars. Uh, U.S. dollars, yeah, U.S. dollars. So this is how much? It's 19.76 U.S. dollars which is a very very decent price let's calculate how much is this for per gigabyte I'm just curious to do that as I said this tutorial or rather uh, something like uh, analyze is, uh, is gonna be a little bit longer but I just wanna cover as much as possible so uh, 19. Point 7636 divided by 32 gigabytes is 0 0.61 dollars or 62 cents per gigabyte very very nice price I found also Kingston 32 gigabytes which is USB 2 device for 25 Bulgarian lefts which is also a very good price for 32 gigabytes so uh, we have less than one Bulgarian left uh, per gigabyte 25 let's see how much is that so my experiments will be done with these two devices very nice thumb drive 16 okay let me calculate this USB 2 Kingston see so this is sixteen dollars point four seven six nine divided by thirty two equals fifty fifty two cents per gigabyte very very decent price okay so I have two USB drives 32 gigabytes both of them one is transcendent let me read again yeah transcendent let me type that Tran let me 
make sure that is transcendent. And then, of course, uh, it's 32 gigabyte USB 3, and another one is King King the Kingston. Let me see again. Data Traveler. Yeah, Kingston. Kingston 32 gigabytes USB 2. And this one is sixteen dollars, sixteen point. This one is sixteen dollars. Another one we saw how much was it. Very very nice price for external drives which you can carry in your pocket. So I have to cover another topic uh, a little bit, just a little bit. Why did they choose? Uh, these pen drives, first of all, they're smaller than the hard drives. Even though the hard drive could have the same interface, USB 3, uh, the hard drives are still bigger, size-wise. And I want to have something very small in my pocket, or maybe on my keychain, usually on the keychain. And both these are very small. External SATA is not that portable. External SATA uh, is an interface which not all computers has. My motherboard fortunately has it, but uh, I'm not sure if I move somewhere I'll have this option. So I have at least USB 2 on most of the modern computers. So and I want to be a portable. So that's why my choice was interface USB 3 which is compatible with USB 2 I want to be portable and compatible the device is smaller even though it performs a little bit slower than external SATA. As I said in any case I didn't have a chance to try with external SATA. I look at in local stores uh, retail stores and I couldn't find a external hard drive with SATA. All the suppliers actually offer external hard drives with USB 3 interface. It's more convenient, more portable, probably that's why. So this is one of the reasons I just want to be more portable. And also the speed of USB 3 is uh, is very good. So let's get back to the to the diagrams with the speed, my experiments with uh, AG Tune Pro. Okay, so let's browse my experiments. I made uh, these experiments only with USB 3.2 devices. As I said, not with external SATA, but I made enough research. I just showed to you the theoretical speeds, and let's see what do we get now here. Okay, so um, first computer I call Annie. So this is those are the results. This is my internal hard drive, which is both probably six or seven years ago. It's Hitachi, and um, it performs relatively good. Here it is, the benchmark. I cannot see very well the the results here, so let me try to zoom it somehow. seventy six point one megabits per second megabytes per second sorry HD tune pro shows the things in megabytes so this is the speed of my Hitachi HD 72 after seven years without any defragmentation and Windows XP um, not a very good speed but this is what it is. 
it. So when you try actually to um, test the writing speed, you get this error with HD Tune Pro, which tells you that uh, you shouldn't have partitions on the hard drive. So writing speed is not possible. That's why I didn't format or didn't create partitions on my newly bought hard drives, which are one terabytes, Seagate Barracuda because I just wanted to make some experiments. Okay, and uh, those are my experiments with uh, file benchmark on HD Tune Pro. As you can see, oops, again, yeah, this maybe works. At least we don't uh, we see that. Oops, what happened? Again, close to 60 megabytes per second. This is one internal hard drive. I just wanted to see the internal hard drives as well to compare them with uh, what I have here, what I have as external devices, just to see how much I have to pay for the fact that I'm not using internal hard drive SSD devices probably will perform much, fire, uh, much faster okay so those are the experiments I did on the very same computer with uh, one terabyte Seagate Barracuda bought just recently okay those are the info, those are, this is the health screen of HD Tune Pro and uh, this is the performance, the reading performance. As we can see here in the first cylinders we start with 200 mega megabytes per second and in the internal which uh, are closer probably to, uh, they have the smallest diameter we drop to how much 95.7 megabits per second this is because this device is mechanical it rotates and uh, the heads should move that's why the speed depends on the, um, how far the head goes into this disk Okay, so the average speed is 167.1 megabytes per second. Uh, still pretty good speed. Reading speed. Okay, this is the writing speed. Which I, I have been able to measure just because I didn't partition my hard drive. I have it brand new inserted into my computer. So, minimum speed again in the, uh, in the internal cylinders is 96.6 megabit megabytes per second and on the peripheral, peripheral cylinders I have a pretty good speed 208 megabytes per second and average speed of 163.6 megabytes per second writing speed. Maybe this is gonna drop when I have partitions of course I cannot measure in this case uh, the writing speed but the reading speed maybe will uh, decrease. Okay so those are two internal hard drives. Again this is the screen the warning screen which you get when you try to measure, to benchmark actually the writing speed and you just have to check this checkbox and say OK because you agree to make this test tests. here we go but because there is no partition, there is no file system, there are no partitions, no file system you cannot perform the file benchmarks the file cannot be Save to the hard drive and cannot be retrieved afterwards. So that's why in, you cannot perform the file benchmark test. Okay, now let's see uh, external drive which 
which are USB 2 in the beginning. So I had one Kingston DT. I made the screenshots of the entire screen. Maybe this was a mistake. I should have uh, saved this using the HD Tune Pro. But I didn't do it this way. So in any case, I will zoom it just to see it. So it's Kingston DT 100G2. This USB drive is 4 gigabytes and is USB 2. You cannot see the health, you cannot see the temperature of the device. Okay. But we can see a pretty stable reading speed because there are no moving parts no cylinders which are spinning. As you can see it's 15 megabytes per second. So the average speed is 14.99 megabytes per second. And this flash drive is uh, pretty full. So it's a uh, much lower performance than the internal hard drives which are seri a serial ATA. 15 megabytes uh, was something which uh, didn't please me very much. 15 megabytes per second, significant uh, decrease of the speed. So I decided that I have to find something better. 15 megabytes. As I said, I try with Maxwell, and I will show you that Maxwell has 12 megabytes per second and was almost impossible to work with the speed with a live CD on it and I also mentioned that I have created it manually with my Linux uh, box. Okay, again you cannot uh, test the writing speed and uh, because this USB drive was full I just uh, couldn't check also the file benchmark. I couldn't perform the file benchmark. Okay, now I have uh, one expensive, at least this is the most expensive USB flash drive here which you can find in the retail sto stores in this country. I have Corsair Voyager 16 gigabytes which I bought maybe 3-4 years ago and, but uh, at that time it was the most expensive uh, USB drive. As far as I remember I bought it 16 gigabytes for 80 Bulgarian lefts, which is approximately $60 or so. So let's see how this performs. The hard drive also has partition and as usual it's formatted with uh, FAT32. Uh, the USB drives usually come with a partition and with the file uh, allocation table 32 because it's the most universal. It works on Linux, it works on uh, Windows, it works on iOS. Macintoshes. Okay, so here yeah, I don't have uh, that much resources, but I still can uh, perform quite, quite a lot of texts. So this is the name of the USB drive, which is USB 2, 16 gigabytes, Corsair Voyager GT, 16 gigabytes. So let's see how this USB drive performed compared to the Kingston much better. Kingston if you remember was 15 this one is almost 20 almost 30 actually 30 megabytes per second so the average speed is 28.3 megabytes per second and as usual for not mechanical devices storage devices the performance is uh, is stable, pretty stable. Okay, so the minimum is 20.7 megabytes per second, the maximum is 29.1. This one uh, is a very good to put on live, C live CD on it and use it as your uh, pocket operating system. If you, of course, you, you can create a persistent uh, live CD. Okay, so let me go back. Let me see how it performed uh, with the file benchmark. Of course, again, no information, no temperature information. 
of course you cannot perform the writing tests again because there is a data partitions date in data there and here we go again here with the file benchmarks file benchmarks 30 megabits per second megabytes per second which is uh, very good the blue is writing speed the orange is the reading speed uh, sorry reading speed is blue writing speed is orange if I made a mistake excuse me so okay this is my uh, Voyager Corsair Voyager a very good uh, USB flash drives very small and uh, very reliable I bought two of them and uh, one doesn't perform very well but the second one is okay so that's it now Corsair Voyager here still Corsair USB disk pen disk pro uh, this is the Maxwell 4 gigabytes it shows me only 3 gigabytes probably because I did the partitions as it described in the tutorial or we're losing 1 gigabyte anyway even though they claim, the producer claimed that it's a 4 gigabytes in fact you have only 3 gigabytes not sure about that just a speculation but in any case so this is the performance in Maxwell after having two partitions there one of them is FAT32 file location table 32 with the persistent file created according to the tutorial on it and uh, Linux image also there and the group files as well uh, group has created a boot folder and inside I had um, uh, group files after that I moved there the <coughs> the Linux image which I extracted from the from the live CD and uh, also the configuration file of the group uh, grant unified uh, bootloader group 2 So 12.5 megabytes per second, uh, that's not very good performance and as I said this made this uh, USB drive almost useless. It's so slow that you almost cannot use it with this speed 12.5. So my conclusion is you have to find something faster, at least probably 30 megabytes per second and after that I'm going to show you that uh, for a very a uh, decent price you can buy USB 3 device flash drive and uh, it's usable this one is usable okay so this is the speed of my Maxwell write benchmark cannot be performed file benchmark very bad performance made the worst, maybe the worst of all my devices, external devices pen drives, USB drives, key drives as they call it, so many names for the same thing okay so as you can see very bad performance uh, not even 12.5 megabytes per second reading and writing is even worse it's almost 5 megabytes per second okay let me check next this is uh, how the USB drive looks on the Windows XP removable disk 2.49 gigabytes is the file location table partition FAT partition okay so let's continue with the next USB drive again 
what did I do here again 7 gigabytes but it is 8 gigabyte Kingston date traveler uh, I have another one Kingston another model it claims that it's 8 gigabytes but in fact as you can see AG Tune Pro shows that this is 7 gigabytes this is the performance of my third USB drive so far I have uh, shown to you only two one was uh, no actually this is the fourth one I have shown just to recall I have shown the Kingston 4 gigabytes after that I have shown Corsair Corsair Voyager 16 gigabytes the third one was Maxwell, the worst performing USB drive, and this one is the fourth. It's again Kingston, but this time is 8 gigabytes. I made so many tests just to make sure I will choose something decent. So, USB 2, Kingston, 8 gigabytes, Kingston Data Traveler G3, 7 gigabytes, shows the HD Tune Pro actually performs with 20 megabytes per second so the best of my USB drives was the Corsair Voyager which performs with almost 30 megabytes per second reads, reads the data with 30 megabytes per second this one is uh, okay with 20 megabytes per second okay so the next one I did uh, the test again because of this uh, this drop I don't know why it, it happened and after that I checked again just to make sure that uh, the drive is okay and there is no problem again I cannot write to this because there are partitions and here we go the file benchmark again almost 25 22 let's say 20 megabytes per second Kingston 8 gigabytes okay again there is no health information there is no temperature for these external drives we cannot perform the writing benchmarks Kingston date traveler now as I said this is the fifth USB drive I just bought one very cheap I I can see the very cheap 32 gigabytes data traveler SE9 this is what is written on the on the package 32 gigabytes very slim very nice USB drive unfortunately I cannot show you the uh, picture of it 32 gigabytes uh, I guess it's uh, in metal case but it could be a plastic case which is metalized with a, with a metal on it in any case USB 2 32 gigabytes Kingston let's see its performance data traveler I don't know why I tried I started with uh, file benchmark probably I just missed the previous uh, benchmark so I will go back this is the fifth USB drive which is again USB 2 Kingston there is no there is data actually on it few files 32 gigabytes almost 20 megabytes per second let me look at here um, data traveler yep this is what I actually I'm just trying to figure out here 7 gigabytes yeah this is the 7 gigabytes still and this is the 31 gigabytes actually this this drop is in my newest USB drive which is 31 32 gigabytes yeah I don't know why there is such a drop in the performance and I did it second time just to make sure that everything works fine cannot perform this 
Okay, so this data traveler, 31 gigabytes, performs well, 20 megabytes per second. So the winner is the Corsair Voyager, which performs with 30 megabytes per second. Okay, now look at here again Seagate free agent I have external hard drive USB 2 I bought Seagate free agent I just wanted to see how the mechanical hard drives with USB 2 perform and you see that uh, even though the interface is again USB 2, the hard drive performs much better. So this is an external hard drive with, with USB 2 interface to the computer. Mechanical. Almost, almost like my Corsair Voyager USB drive. 30 megabytes per second. Seagate free agent 1 gigabyte. And I cannot explain why the performance is uh, the same even though this is a mechanical device. 29.4 megabytes per second. Seagate free agent 1 terabyte. I cannot perform the writing tests, of course, and here we go, the file tests. So, my conclusion is that if you buy a good flash drive, like Corsair Voyager, for example, you will have device which performs almost with the identical speed like external mechanical hard drive with USB 2 interface. So if they both use the same USB 2 interfaces, the flash drive performs with the same performance, with the same speed like the external hard drive. So file benchmark almost 30 megabytes per second. Read, write almost the same. Okay, so now this is another computer with two internal hard drives which are serial ATA and this again is Seagate Barracuda 1 gigabyte on another computer. So it has the same performance 200 megabytes per second which drops to 94.2 megabytes per second. Just as a comparison, the best speed I have been able to get from external USB devices, uh, well performing USB 2 Corsair and USB 2 uh, Data Traveler, was 30 megabytes per second as a comparison. And here, as you can see, the speed drops to 94. 2 megabytes per second. The average speed is 158.6 megabytes per second for internal SATA drive, mechanical, 1 terabyte. Okay, here I can perform the writing tests, benchmarks, because I don't have partitions on this drive. This is the health of the device. I have two warnings and this is the writing test again almost 2 megabytes per second and drops to 94.2 151.9 megabytes per second average speed of the internal serial utter so this is almost 6 times 6 times faster the serial ATI device internal performs faster than external flash uh, USB 2 and external 
hard drive USB 2. Okay. I cannot uh, perform the file benchmark because there is no partition, no, no file system. And uh, this is another internal hard drive, one terabyte I bought two years ago. 50 uh, degrees Celsius because the internal fan of this computer didn't work so the computer was becoming very fat, uh, fa uh, very hot. This is not very good for 40 to 50 uh, degree, uh, degree Celsius. That's acceptable so I just try to see in the extreme situation how the hard drives are going to perform after that. Um, I didn't replace the fan but I, uh, I, I fix it so it works and also I open the case of the computer so the temperature dropped to 40 degrees which is considered uh, acceptable from 20 to 40 degrees uh, Celsius the temperature is acceptable okay so even though it's 50, 50 degrees for the previous disk internal SATA the, the situation was the same maybe the worst temperature wise uh, environment for this hard drive so this is the benchmark it starts from the maximum is 127 megabytes per second and drops to 41.2 so on this on this disk I have two partitions or even more three partitions one is Linux another one is uh, Windows partition and the third one is the swap partition for my Linux installation I have here Ubuntu so my conclusion is that if you have partitions file system and files um, HD Tune Pro will show probably worse performance uh, not so good performance but in any case still better than the external hard drive external external flash drive or tum drive okay i couldn't make uh, perform the writing benchmarks of course because there is no uh, there is a file system and partition and this is the file benchmark almost 100 megabytes per second still three times faster than the best performing external devices my uh, free agent and my cursor okay Hitachi HDS721 uh, here I guess I did again the performance tests of uh, one of my XP computers here it is this is Hitachi HDS 82 gigabytes yeah this is a third computer which is performing very badly right now currently uh, and as you can see its internal hard drive performs uh, not so good 49.8 megabytes per second average speed and the minimum speed drops even below the speed of external flash drive the worst performing flash drive 8.6 megabits per second megabytes per second which tells me that uh, we have to replace this hard drive this is the maximum performance of the same internal hard drive I haven't even checked if this is a serial ATI hard drive I guess it is because the computer is bought uh, I guess 2007-2009 between these two years and this is again the performance when I improved the heat, con the heat conditions in my uh, the temperature conditions in my case now as you can see the temperature dropped to 43 degrees Celsius so if you touch your computer and it's hot probably the fan of your power supply is not working 
so take care of that please as fast as possible the maximum uh, temperature which is acceptable is 50 degrees for the hard drive for from 20 to 40 degrees is acceptable not acceptable but perfect maybe 40 degrees some outers uh, point as a perfect temperature for the hard drive so I did again the speed tests when I uh, improved the temperature as you can see uh, the performance is not better when the temperature was higher actually the performance was better on the very same hard drive the old hard drive again one terabyte on the same computer 130 megabytes per second uh, I made the tests with the Microsoft speed up my system again USB 2 connected and here we go now transcend drive E connected to USB 3 port this is the name of the flash device USB device Jet Flash Transcend 32 gigabytes HD hard uh, HD Tune Pro 3.5 shows 31 gigabytes see how this performs now uh, I guess it's connected to USB 2 not I guess it is connected to USB 2 in the beginning of the slide show is uh, there was a note this is USB 3 device 32 gigabytes connected to USB 2 its performance is 20.6 uh, 26.7 megabytes per second which is worse than my Voyager Corsair Voyager which is USB 2 flash drive okay so health is not shown again there is no information about the health I again cannot perform the right benchmarks file benchmark so again just to uh, recall this is transcendent 32 gigabytes USB 3 device connected to USB 2 port of my computer as you can see it performs close to my best USB 2 devices external devices flash drive and uh, mechanical drive Seagate free agent okay so USB 3 device the cheapest one in the store performs almost the same like the fastest and the more expensive the most expensive USB 2 flash drive so better buy a cheap USB 3 instead of the most expensive USB 2 this is my conclusion of course I don't uh, claim that 100% uh, I don't know how reliable this device is but I saw my experience shows me that even the most expensive USB 2 devices uh, are failing too so my policy is to buy the cheapest one at least I'm not gonna regret that uh, it fails instead of giving four or five times more money for the same device I better buy four devices cheapest devices especially here in this country okay so let's continue further still jet rush transcendent 32 gigabytes 31 gigabytes shows the HD Tune Pro and now I will try with this. I will try with speed up my system. Uh, still connected to USB 2. This is the screen which Microsoft shows me. And I don't know why I didn't do performance tests on this. Maybe I'll do I did it later. Now, the next slides are for the same transcendent device connected to USB 3. 
connected to USB 3, no ready, bo no ready boost. Okay, so without ready boost. Let's see the performance. 80 megabytes per second, pretty stable all the time. 80 0.7 megabytes per second performance, which is just perfect performance. It's uh, almost three times, two and a half times faster than my fastest USB 2 device when I connect it to USB 3. I have to tell you that my USB 3 devices are on um, PCI uh, card, which I have to plug into the motherboard. The motherboard came USB 3 ready but as I said I had to do it with um, extension card and on top of that when I connect I'm going a little bit uh, ahead of myself but when I connect my USB 3 device to the USB 3 port on my uh, computer and I try to boot from it it's not possible the USB 3 drivers are not included in the BIOS base input output system so unfortunately I cannot use uh, the maximum speed I have to do other tricks if I want to boot from uh, actually to use my live uh, CD my live Linux on the USB 3 device I'm forced to connect it to USB 2 if I want to boot from it so uh, there is a workaround but I'm not gonna cover it in this tutorial so I'm gonna continue now with the benchmarks so almost 80 megabytes per second for storage is just perfect if you don't store on it uh, the live CD and if you don't use it like a live system second test again just to convince myself that it's a very fast device as you can see the performance dropped to 75.5 first test was good, the second one uh, deteriorated a little bit, but still okay. Uh, so that's it. The conclusion is that uh, with the fastest USB flash device and my external mechanical hard drive, again USB 2, the maximum speed I have been able to get is 30 megabytes per second. 30 megabytes per second is not very fast even though it's acceptable I feel um, I feel that the speed is not enough sometimes when I say fast to these devices to my cursor and my uh, external data traveler but still is acceptable so if you have cursor or another brand which is performing with uh, 30 megabytes per second you can install, you can make it bootable uh, live CD with Linux and you can carry around and you ha you'll have your own uh, Linux as I said you can either install the Linux directly on the USB drive or you can have a live CD with persistence as I did and I told you also in the beginning why do I prefer persistence because uh, even though the security there is no security in fact because you are not prompt for username and password you just uh, go there and you have the control over the entire system I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna give my pen drive to somebody else so that's why uh, I don't care about the security very much and also uh, the persistence is represented with uh, with only one file. Okay, so this is the conclusion. Internal hard drives perform uh, very well, 200 megabytes per second. Max speed average 156 megabytes per second or so. Uh, second is the USB 3 flash device, even the cheapest one, which I have been able to find in retail stores here performs with uh, 80 megabytes per second very good but make sure that your USB 3 your system can boot from USB 3 in this case without any troubles and workarounds you will be able to use your live CD with USB 3 